My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative. Primary care physicians have often questioned whether women and men sometimes can truly express free choice under pressure from family and community. This choice includes the right to determine the sex of a child, as long as a couple are doing it for themselves. Today on the show, we will be looking at sex selection and family balancing. The show is My Fertility Path and it's brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative FI. This is the only show where we share real life stories about infertility. The treatments available the struggles and the joy that comes thereafter. I am Nsi Kwetim and welcome to the show. Balancing allows couples to choose the gender of their baby. Our guest today is Mrs. Rosalind Obasa Gladibo, a clinical embryologist. Also with us is a resident doctor, Dr. Bayomi Ajayi, the CEO of Nautical Fertility Centre. What? Always a pleasure to be here. I was oh, going to say that. You need to let me welcome you properly. Okay. All right, go on. <laughs> welcome, doctor. Thank you very much. And welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. So, what is sex selection? Okay, sex selection is the attempt to mm -hmm. control the sex or the gender of the offspring. And the man has been trying to do this for quite a long time. <laughs> uh, so we have so many methods of some that are not science, so scientific, and then now the ones that are scientific. I'm sure you heard that you, you sleep in one way after intercourse. You bend over uh -huh. or you lift your legs. Uh -huh. You know, you can, there's, there's so many things. There's so many things. Yes. But this, there are scientific methods of doing this as well. And you could look at it from probably before fertilization mm -hmm. and then after fertilization or before implantation. Okay. So before fertilization, we could attempt to choose the sperm that control. You know, the we know that is the man that determines the sex of the baby. Yes. So we could choose, try to choose the Y bearing chromosomes, the, the chromosomes, the, the sperm that have Y chromosomes on them mm -hmm. to use to fertilize the woman's eggs. But it is the, the success rate of that is a little bit low because nature, usually, women don't know that, that they are stronger than men genetically. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think we're getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're stronger than men genetically, <laughs> but it's the best kept secret. <laughs> yes, thank you, Patriarchal Society. Thank you. <laughs> no, I didn't make the, those laws, <laughs> the rules. <laughs> okay. So, but also, you could, which is what probably we're going to focus more on today. Yes. You could do just before implantation, you could choose the sex of the embryo. And that's what uh, Rosalind does. Very frequently. Very frequently. <laughs> so, what are the ways of sex selection? Okay, um, sex selection involves um, two processes. Yes. For us to do, like doctor have said, we need to select the sex of the baby before being um, transferred to the woman. So the woman needs to go through the IVF process and the pre-implantation genetic um, PGT. PGT. Yes, pre-implantation genetic testing. Pre-implantation genetic, genetic testing. testing. Yes. Okay. Simply put, before implantation, you test. You test for yeah. genetics or something like you that. You test for the yes, so the gender. For this the stage. gender at yeah. the stage. Okay, that's interesting to know. So, what usually influences this decision to choose the sex or the gender of the of the child? Well, I think I'll do that. Um, usually, uh, there's some diseases that are carried in particular chromosomes. Okay, there's mm -hmm. some there's some diseases that are born in the Y chromosome. So especially this is some form of thalassemia. So they are carried in the Y chromosome. So if people have that kind of thing, they might want to choose the sex of their baby. So that's a medical reason. All right. But also the commonest reason is family balancing. Just family like you said, balancing. I've had three, four girls and I want to have a boy. And yeah, so that is also the, so like a social reason. 
because I come from a, a story background, I would appreciate it if you could share with us an interesting story, one or two maybe. Okay, yeah. Let's look at one that many years ago didn't end well. Oh, bless. Because we were not doing the service in Nigeria then. We were sending people abroad to go and do this. Mm -hmm. And I remember this professor in the 60s from, you guess what, one part, particular part of the country where the boy, the male child it was is was Igbo. Like, you said that. It's okay. I'll <laughs> so, take it. Yeah. <laughs> Who came to us and then gathered all the money and went to this particular country and then they came back and then there was no embryo to transfer and, and the, the man was furious, he was everything and that was a great learning point for me as well. So when we started the service and we have so many people who are satisfied from they've done their sex selection, mm -hmm. they, they're good with it. I, but uh, I, I think the thing is one that people should understand what they want to go to go through and we take time to explain to them what the process involves, the implication of the process and then before they, they give it a shot. Give it a shot. Do you have any stories? Because top of my head I, I do know that I've heard women complain like I've heard a story where a woman um, gave birth and the husband walks in and it's a girl and he mm -hmm. walks straight out. Yeah. And I can imagine how the woman feels. And yet, because it's not been enough education to let us know that it is a man who carries the Y chromosome. So, what are we doing about these things? Are we educating people apart from us, my fertility class? Yeah, I think that's why this program, programs like this are on, so that people can understand that it's not, I mean, it's heard every time that the man says, don't come back home if it's, if it's a girl, if it's, a, if it's another girl, yeah. Yes. but. Those things are decreasing now okay. because of also you can deploy technology. So now, let me ask you a question because I, I find your job, I, I think you're like the hand that helps people get what they want. Can you walk us through your journey, through your job, so people can understand what an embryologist does? Okay, thank you. Um, an embryologist basically works um, in the umbrella in the laboratory. We work on the gametes, the egg, the sperm, and also the embryos, which is what we get when the egg and the sperm mix. The resulting, um, the resulting, the result of this is the embryo, which is basically what we do. We culture them um, before we transfer them to the woman. This is in the case of infertility, and in other cases. And sometimes it's so bad that the one that is the male is now chromosomally not normal for you to transfer. To transfer, that can be, oh, so, okay, okay, okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't tell me that. We're just getting into the heart of this conversation. <laughs> when we come back, we will talk through this process of sex selection. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the show. You're watching My Fertility Pass. We have Mrs. Rosin Obasagbadebo, a clinical embryologist, and of course, our resident doctor, Dr. Ajayi. They're still with us. Now you have been wondering, or have you been wondering how to balance your family? Or would you like to be more gender specific when you have your next child? Then we're here for you. We're about to discuss the process of sex selection with our fantastic guests. But first off, I'll ask you, do you believe in sex selection? Do you have specific fears? We're going into the streets. Let's find out. Well, sex selection in surrogacy, I mean, it's, it's not important if it's a male or a female, regardless of who it is. Every child is a blessing to me. So it's not compulsory that it must generally be a female or it's not compulsory that it must generally be a male. So far you know that the child that is coming is yours and you love the child regardless of the sex that they fall into. There's no point selecting the sex of the child because they are children. There's no, there's no, everything is equal now. So I don't think 
you should select the sex of a child. A child is a child, either way, is still a person. So, well, it depends on the individual preference. I will never advise someone to select the sex of a child. Why should you select the sex of a child? We are both equal. So, you should not select just anyone that comes to you, accept it. If it's a girl, accept it. If it's a boy, accept it. Don't say, oh, a boy is greater than a girl. Do you want a boy? No, no, no. It doesn't make sense. It depends on what you want. Since it has come to surrogacy, then you have a choice. Because even without surrogacy, people will want to, you know, to still choose the um, sex of their child if it's possible to do so. So if you're going to go an extra mile to do surrogacy, so why not? Well, I, I, I guess for me, uh, uh, it depends on the person, really, because for me, I'm not so keen. I have two daughters. I believe a girl and a boy is exactly the same thing, right? So uh, I, I wouldn't do it, but for some reasons, some people might be particular about you know sex selection and all that. If if they are that keen for one reason or the other, why not? So now, doctor. What is the first step that is considered, you know, when someone or when someone requires, you know, specific gender? Mm. Well, I guess um, the first thing would be the general evaluation because they, this is going to be an IVF procedure. You need to do the evaluation. You need to be sure that also that um, where the egg is going to come from, mm -hmm. is it going to come from the woman or is it going to be... A, donor eggs mm -hmm. and then you also need to be sure depending on the age of the woman is she fit enough to be able to carry a pregnancy so once you've sorted all that out then you can now the process itself can really start so those are the specific tests that are required yeah. for that okay so um is there what role would um ovarian stimulation play in something like this? Yes, um, the patient, the clients in question would go through high behave, mm -hmm. like doctor has mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and the ovary has to be stimulated in order to get more follicles, to recruit more follicles mm -hmm. and get more eggs as much as possible okay. because of the procedure that we want to carry out. Okay. We need more embryos. We need to get more eggs and then result in embryos. Okay, so that the drugs thing? are given to stimulate the ovaries to work well, to produce more. Naturally, yes. in the natural process, um, the way it has been designed, we recruit one or two eggs in a month. So these um, drugs that are given to help stimulate the ovaries will help to recruit more follicles, thereby producing more eggs, so to speak. Okay. So is that the same thing as having a biopsy, a biopsy no, taken? No, it is different from the biopsy. So what is um, what, what's the that? biopsy? Yes, okay, the biopsy. after we've um, gotten eggs um, in the laboratory, we mm -hmm. have to mix the egg and the sperm, or we mm -hmm. inject the egg and the sperm, depending on what uh, method we are using. Mm -hmm. Could be the ICSI or the conventional high behalf in this case. Okay, so when we have done this, we culture the embryos. Mm -hmm. We to day five, which is what we do, and which is the best, technically speaking, is the best that gives the best result, the day five biopsy, which is the day five embryos, okay. like culturing the embryos from the zero, one, two, two, three, four, five. So on the day five, we take a part of that embryo. Now, the way the embryo is designed, um, it has three parts. Okay. Okay. We have the inner cell mass, which forms the embryo which mm -hmm. forms the baby, okay? We have another part, which is the trophectodem. Okay, basically it is the placenta, the part that forms the placenta. Then they have the fluid cavity, which is the third one. Now, um, some questions we get to ask, uh, to we, uh, we get people asking us is, when you take part of these embryos, are you taking part of my baby? So it is the part of the placenta, which is tro the trophectodem. The part that we take is the one forming the placenta. So we take just a part, which is the representative of the embryo, and we send it to the genetic lab for analysis. So that is, so you're saying that at day five, yes. you do your genetic analysis. We take parts of biopsy. the embryo, which is the biopsy. Biopsy is taking a part, taken okay. from the embryo, before we now send for analysis. So at what point do you begin or consider the genetic analysis? Okay, 
when we get the parts, mm -hmm. we there's another method called tubing, where we keep the tubing. Yes, tubing is this part of the cell, this part of the embryo that we've taken, mm -hmm. we tube in a tube. Mm -hmm. Then the main embryo itself, we keep, we freeze it. Mm -hmm. You know, earlier we talked about vitrification. That is storing of the embryo. Storing of the embryo. So the embryo yes. is still there. Mm -hmm. The embryo is fine. The embryo mm -hmm. is safe. It's kept well. So what we send for the analysis is just biopsy. that's biopsy. Biopsy. Yes. You know, it represents, for instance, if we have um, three embryos, embryo A, B, C, mm -hmm. and then um, we've taken the biopsy, which is a part of embryo A, we'll keep embryo A itself. Yes. We store it. Now, embryo B also, we do the same. Embryo C, we do the same. So we analyze it genetically. We screen the cell. We screen the cell, we screen the chromosomes. So when the result is coming out, we would know which one is normal. We don't just screen even for sex, select, even just the sex. We want to know which one is normal. It could be the normal male or the normal female. The result could come out as abnormal also. So we don't just transfer just because we want to choose a sex. We need to be sure that what we're transferring is normal. It's normal. Yes. So it screens through the chromosomes. Through the, the chromosomes. chromosomes. Then okay. we would know which one is considered for transfer. Is it embryo A? Then we know we're transferring embryo A, which is a normal male or normal female as the case may be. Is it embryo B? Just like that. So with this process, you can choose your perfect baby. When we return, we will take some questions from social media. So please keep them coming. But stay with us. You're still watching My Fertility Pass and our guests are still here with us and we've been talking about sex selection and family balancing. So doctor, are there any downsides to sex selection? Well, like any procedure, there are downsides to okay. it, and especially the fact that if every, if it's not controlled and everybody just chooses a particular agenda, then there will be imbalance in the world, and that we don't really look forward to that. So there are always the ethical questions always come up about who are those who can qualify for uh, family balancing. So because you see now, some people say we want to have two children. They've not even had any at all. They're planning for two children and they want to have a boy and a girl so that they can close the case. That's probably... Selfish. Well. So we'll take some questions from social media. So someone wants to know what the success rate of sex selection is. Um, sex selection, with the method that we use, the success rate is as high as 99.9%. But we need to know that with the IVF process that is involved, the success rate of IVF is age dependence. So it depends on the age of the woman. But just for the sex selection, it is about 99.9% accuracy that you will get the desired sex. So after all said and done, you still go right onto the woman <laughs> and our age is affected. All right then, is there an increased chance of birth defect if you go through this process? Oh, um, well, like I mentioned earlier, um, the chromosomes are being screened. Yes. So these embryos are screened before transferred. Mm -hmm. We know which one is abnormal, which one is normal. Okay. So of course, what we are transferring is a normal embryo. So, so we ethically, are you're bound to transfer just the normal the one. The normal embryo. Ethically. So are you saying that, sorry, this is just mm -hmm. top of my mm -hmm. head. Are you saying that if you transfer an abnormal one, I can sue you? No, because we, ethically you're bound mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to transfer to me a normal one. Mm -hmm. yes. But let's get this straight. Okay. You know, she said, uh, when we're talking about normal and abnormal babies, it is not every abnormality that is genetically transmitted. Right. So we're not saying that if you do this, you can never have an abnormal child. Good. But we're saying that diseases that we know the genes that transmit them and they're screened for, you are not likely to have, to have such babies. Okay, that's good. But someone else might be asking. Yeah. I just thought to ask, is this process painful? It's IVF. <laughs> it's emotionally it? draining. Oh, oh. Well, I guess um, IVF is not is not a walk in the park. No. It's, and that's why many centers will 
support you. We have fertility counselors, we have fertility coaches, we have everything to make sure that some of some centers even have acupuncture. For relaxation. Yes. But you know the problem with us in Nigeria is that we think we're strong when we don't go through counseling. We think uh, it's only, counseling is for weak people. No, yeah. it's not. I think it's only the strong that are able to face their vulnerabilities. I agree totally. And that is what it is. And yeah. so we need to let people know that being vulnerable is a sign of strength. Yeah. Oh, there's, a, there's a fourth question here. I'm interested in this. However, I need to know the cost implication. Mm. Money talks. <laughs> <laughs> Every other thing works. I tell you. Yeah, yeah, but um, why am I not be able to save cost of TV? Because I can only tell you about one center, how much a center does it. I don't know how much other centers do it. So, yeah. but what I would say is that when you're doing, uh, you see, let's get this clear. There are so many things involved in this. If you're doing only sex selection, like. Uh, uh, Rosemary okay. said, you're just looking at the chromosomes. That's about the easiest thing to do. All right? But if you're not screening the genes of the baby, you know, I always say that it's like you have a bookshelf, 23 layers of bookshelf. You can come into the room and you see, oh, one of the layer four, one is missing, one has fallen down, or oh, they're true. That's the easy part. That's the chromosomes. Yes. But opening the book, and then seeing a typographical error is a more difficult thing. So the same thing, if you're screening for the genes, yes. it's a lot, it's more difficult. And so cost also is part of, this also affects cost. What do you want to do? Is it only sex selection? Because that's looking at the chromosomes. Yes. That's much easier. Do you want to see that these embryos are also genetically normal? Mm -hmm. That is a little bit more difficult. So it depends on what you want to do. That's what will determine the price of what you are paying for. Thank you so much and thank you Rosling. It was welcome. a pleasure to have you here. Same you really opened up. <laughs> <laughs> My Fertility Path brings you all you need to know in your journey to fertility. Today we dug into the topic of sex selection and we hope it has helped someone who is stuck about making a decision about family balancing just to move forward. Thank you all for watching. Always remember infertility should never define you. See or speak to someone today. My name is Nsik Burton. Keep sharing, keep educating, and I will see you next time. Thank you. My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative.